Hello, I am Chuck Crawford, Data Collection Supervisor with the Edwards Aquifer Authority. Today we're at Fort Sam Houston, home of state well number 6837203, otherwise known as well J17 for the city of San Antonio. Follow me in. J17 is housed in a concrete 20 by 20 building. Um, we have it locked in this, this work box here. Hello, I'm Brian Anderson, Director of Data Management at the Edwards Aquifer Authority. We're here at the J-17 Index Well. The J-17 Index Well is part of our critical period management. We use this well to see about the quantity of water in the San Antonio pool section of the Edwards Aquifer. Uh, the J-17 Well actually has one of the longest histories of uh, water level measurements in the state of Texas. It was drilled in 1914 to supply the newly uh, burgeoning Fort Sam Houston here in San Antonio. About 1932, the U.S. Geological Survey decided to start measuring this well continuously uh, with analog chart recorder. Uh, this gave measurements almost at a near every second scale uh, in the 60s and the 70s. It was then transferred over to the state of Texas uh, where they maintained records on water level measurement. And now the Edwards Aquifer Authority maintains the measurements at this J-17 index well. And the well construction begins at uh, zero feet, which is going to be the ground surface. It is an eight inch steel casing uh, then goes down to 340 feet um, when then it, it collars into a six inch casing down to 694 feet. At 694 feet, it is an open hole into the Edwards Aquifer down to 874 feet. Uh, there's also a few other points that we monitor for our critical period management. That includes the flow from Comal Springs and from San Marcos Springs. Between these three different sites and the information that we collect from them, we're able to monitor the Edwards Aquifer and be able to reduce pumping in times of drought to maintain spring flows in those vital ecosystems, not only for the endangered species, but for the health of the ecosystem uh, in general. The water level at J17 is measured with three different instrumentations here. It's uh, three pressure transducers. The pressure transducer is measured here, um, on this, has a sensor on the end, and is measured by the amount of pressure or force that is applied upon the sensor. Then it is uh, converted into a uh, engineering unit, in this case being the amount of feet below water level. Now the J17 wells we see here is not the only well that we monitor for index wells and critical period management. Uh, there's also another well in Uvalde, uh, the J27 well, uh, which we monitor very similar to how we monitor the J17 well, uh, and that's for the Uvalde pool section. There's actually a, a spot near uh, Canipa, the town of Canipa, it's called the Canipa Gap, that forms a geologic barrier between the two pools, the San Antonio pool and the Uvalde pool. That's why we have different management for each of those uh, sections. Uh, the J27, specifically for Uvalde County, uh, and the J17, Comal and San Marcos Springs, specifically for the San Antonio pool. Now this well, uh, J17, uh, people might ask, well, why is it called J17? That actually comes from a Texas Department of Water Resources groundwater bulletin from 1956. They would basically try and find all the wells in the areas of Texas and write reports on them between the 50s and the 60s, spurred by the drought of the 1950s. Uh, this well just happened to be in the J section of the map, and it was the 17th well that they inventoried. Thus, we have J17. And so these aren't the only wells that we monitor. The Edwards Aquifer Authority monitors about 70 groundwater wells throughout our area. Uh, this information is used in, uh, for geoscientists and groundwater modelers to help ascertain the health of the Edwards Aquifer and to help us manage the levels and the quality of the aquifer uh, better for our, our customers uh, and for the environment and the ecosystem in general. Now I'm going to show you, uh, take a water level measurement here. Um, this right here is called an E-line. Let's go ahead and get a water level measurement. And we got a beep there. Now just pull it up until it's out of the water. All right, so looking at right now about 95.91 uh, there. Um, this is gonna connect to our, our logger and transmitter. So I go ahead and connect that 95.92. 
and then we subtract 0.83. So we're looking about 95.09. Um, and so as I connect here to the logger transmitter, I go ahead and take a reading. And so let me show you here. This is going to be the server that we view, um, and it has all of the water, all the measurements. Um, we, it measures in 15 minute intervals and transmits in 15 minute intervals. Uh, we also have close to 58 rain gauges that helps us identify the precipitation. Uh, because the Edwards Aquifer is a karst aquifer, it reacts very uh, well to rain and no rain. Uh, as you'll see in the graphs, as uh, soon as we have rain, that aquifer levels will come up fairly quickly. Uh, and as we see in today, when we don't have rain, those levels will drop very precipitously. Uh, so it's a very dynamic aquifer. It is susceptible to rain and no rain. So we want to get an idea of how much input comes into the aquifer through recharge. Thus, we have our rain gauges. We also have weather stations, which helps us identify the solar radiation and the relative climate uh, conditions within our Edwards Aquifer region. So the main focus of the data management section of the Edwards Aquifer is to gather, gather as much information as we can, as much environmental information from groundwater wells, rain gauges, streams, springs, and weather stations in order to help us identify the health of the Edwards Aquifer and make sure that there's plenty of water for future generations. I hope you learned a little bit today about the Edwards Aquifer Authority data collection of J17 index well.